All right, Auto One, we're going to be talking about vehicle identification today. I hope you're all doing well, and I'm glad to be here, and I know you're not glad to be there, but let's go. Here we go. So we want to talk about how we can identify a vehicle from a number of standpoints. So up here on the screen, it says vehicle identification number or VIN. VIN is what I call the fingerprint uh, of the car. It's a 17-digit, sorry, a little too much, 17-digit alphanumeric number that identifies that car from another car. There's a lot of information we can tell from it. I call it the fingerprint of a vehicle because no two VINs are the same uh, from two different cars. The first 10 digits of a VIN might be the same as another car, meaning you could have two uh, 2004 Toyota Tundras. Um, but the last seven digits, which are the serial number, will be different, okay? so. The VIN is the fingerprint of the car. The VIN is found on the dash near the driver's uh, fender, uh, window pillar, driver's door jam, or engine plate. So for example, here's a 98 Honda Civic, and I'm pointing to right through the windshield, right by the windshield wiper, there's the VIN number there. And in this door jam, here's a plate. It's a little bit blurry, I apologize for that, but that is has the VIN number. And there's other places, but by law, it has to be here on the dash. It has to be there. If it's not there, if somebody's removed it, that car is potentially stolen. If this one right here is not there, that could be because the car was in an accident, was repainted, something like that. This is not illegal for this one to be gone. So that VIN number will tell us things about the engine, the trim, the color, the transmission, all kinds of stuff. Um, but it gives us a lot of specific owner information, and it's critical to make sure that that number matches the number on the vehicle title. We'll talk about that in just a moment. So here we go. Next is a picture of a vehicle title. And I'm sorry, it's not so clear. Um, it's the best we can do for now, though. Um, but what you'll notice is here's the license plate number. Here's the VIN number right here. This does not have to be the same as the car because somebody could have a personalized license plate. This must be the same as the car or the car is potentially stolen. So if you're going to buy a car and you have a vehicle title, this one is pink and this people would call it a pink slip. You're going to make sure that that VIN number does match the, the VIN number on the car. Okay. A couple of quick things just so you know. This is the owner. It happens to be a business in this case. If this company is going to sell this car, they need to date right there. And then somebody needs to sign for that business right there. If there are two people and it's connected by an and, then two people have to date and sign here. If it's connected by an or, then either one can sign. They don't have to both sign. I'm telling you this, so it'll help you when you go to the DMV, et cetera. Also, they have to put the odometer here, the odometer information for the vehicle. They also have to date and sign here that just verifies that the odometer um, is correct. Only one person needs to sign there. Um, you don't need to sign here. This signature spot is if there's a bank that has a loan for, uh, out for the car, what we say there's a lien against the car, then a bank, if it'll be stamped here, the institution, the lending institution. A representative from that um, company has to sign here and it has to be notarized. So if you buy a car and it's got an entity right here, a business name here, that business needs to sign and have this notarized for to, to be able to transfer title. We never date and sign the title until we're ready to sell the car. Whoever physically holds this, if it's dated and signed and odometer and dated and signed, whoever physically holds that can legally argue that they own the vehicle. Let's keep going. Um, so here's a VIN number, nothing to write down here necessarily. This VIN number here is showing you 17 digits. It's showing you that each digit or series of digits refers to something. So for example, this eighth digit right here uh, refers to, sorry, uh, am I doing the right one? So, sorry, two, four, six, eight. This eighth digit right here talks about the type of engine that it has, etc. And there's other things that we can tell from that VIN number. So on um, the sticker in the door jam, here's a door jam sticker. We have what's called the production date. Production date is the month and year from the driver's door jam that this car was assembled on the assembly line. The engine may have been made three weeks before, the transmission a month before, but this is the month and date that this car was actually assembled and it rolled off the assembly line. So this is an 02 of 99, okay? 
So this was February of 99. This is essential to know when you're ordering parts because many times uh, cars made in a different month will actually have different parts on them. Most vehicles made after August in a model year will be considered the following model year. So for example, a September of 2003 would be made in September of 03, but it's actually a 2004 model year. And that's universal in the automotive industry. So a 10 of 2012 is a, is a 2013, a two of 2014 is a 2014, etc. Okay. If there's ever any question about the model year of the car, the catalyst sticker on the underside of the hood, which is going to come up here on uh, no, two more slides, um, is going to show us the model year. Some cars have what's called an option code sticker on them. This is mostly General Motors, so vehicles, Pontiac, Chevrolet, GMC, Chevy truck, etc. Um, this option code sticker that looks like this is a series of three, usually three digits, alphanumeric, so it'll be like two letters and a number, or yeah, most all of them are two letters and a number. Uh, this JV9, because I used to work at General Motors in the parts department, refers to brakes, a certain type of brake on the car. But General Motors puts this sticker that tells all the specific options for that particular vehicle, um, and they'll put it inside the glove box door, or sometimes in the trunk on a side panel, or under the hood on an inner fender well. Um, this LS7 is a a very, very famous um, engine code for Chevrolet. It's usually found, like I said, on the glove box door, under the trunk mat, if it has a trunk, or in an inner fender well in the engine compartment. And this would be on a truck. This would be on a truck. This would usually be on the passenger car right here. Okay. This is now replaced by dealership um, computer printout. So you can go to uh, Cole Chrysler and you can go to the parts department and say, I'm pretty cool. I know Tom Cole. Just kidding. Anyways. Um, you can ask them to print out, if you give them the VIN number, could they print out the vehicle options? And they should be able to give you a sheet with the VIN number and it tells all the vehicle options. All right. So next is the emissions label. So one, one slide forward. Now I mentioned that it has the model year on it. So what you'll notice is right here is the current model year. This car is a 99 model year. The production date is still in the door jam, but this uh, would be a model year 1999, and this sticker is on the underside of the hood. I'm going to show you on the car in a few minutes. Um, but what you'll notice is it says several things. 3.0 liter, that's the volume of the, the combined volume of all the cylinders. This is, happens to be a six cylinder. So if we take the area of a circle, pi r squared, times the height of a cylinder, that gives us the volume times the number of cylinders, in this case six. We get a combined engine cylinder volume of 3.0 uh, liters. So if I grab the camera and come on down here just for a moment and look at this uh, block right here, this V6 Lexus block, it's standing upright. It's got one, two, three cylinders and three over here, three cylinders. If you do the math, pi r squared times the height of that cylinder, Multiply it by six, that's the combined volume of what we call the displacement of the engine. And in this case, this is the three liter uh, Lexus RX 300 engine. It's a very, very good engine. Um, so here we go as I get this guy back in place here. All right, something else you want to notice on this sticker is this um, engine family, this XTY XV03. This is real important when we're ordering emissions equipment like a uh, catalytic converter. And Toyota puts an engine code here, the 1MZ-FE. So if you Google search and you look up 3-liter engine, it'll say, oh, it's a 1MZ-FE, and all the Toyota people know which engine that is, the 3-liter V6 dual overhead cam engine that is a real rock and roll engine. Okay, here we go. That's it for that. I'm going to go to the shop, and we'll show you a couple of things about where these are in the car. Okay, so here we go on a Toyota 4Runner out here in the shop. We're going to look at uh, the production date, the VIN number, etc. So first, the VIN number is over here on the dash. You probably cannot see the actual... Oh, you probably can. You can actually see the letters. Ah, it's a little dirty. Let me wipe it off and see if that helps. Boy, if you were... If you had young eyes, you might... It says Toyota, but there's a number in there. It's a little hard to see. Here's a sticker on the fender well. And it's faded, so you can't see the number there anymore. 
There's another sticker on this fender, and that number is faded as well, so you can't see that. I can actually see this one on the dash here, but it's a little hard for you to see. So we're going to go ahead and open the driver's door and come over here. And here's this sticker right here that's going to give us the production date. It also has the VIN number on it. Hopefully I can hold still long enough for you to see it. So there's the VIN number, this JT number, that 17-digit alphanumeric number. And I can tell because it has a J that this one was actually produced in Japan. There's our production date. It's an 11 of 96. So this is a 97 Toyota 4Runner. It's also got some tire size and inflation uh, information. And it also has the gross vehicle weight. So that's 5,250 pounds. And they do um, come up with that weight with a couple of passengers in it. So this is basically a 5,000 pound vehicle. Um, and this one does happen to be a four wheel drive. Um, so next, so we've looked at the VIN number, we've looked at the production date, and now we're going to go to the emissions label, which is right here. And so that label tells us, if you look real carefully, and if I can hold still so it'll focus, tells us that this is a California vehicle. So you'll notice that it says it's a California vehicle right there. So there's two types of cars in the United States either what we call a 49 state federal car or a state of California car because California has a stricter um, a stricter emissions laws. This is a 5 VZFE. Toyota uses that designation. And it does tell us right there, and I'm not sure if you can read that. Yeah, you probably can if it focuses, that it's a 3.4 liter engine. There it is. Um, and it tells us a few other pieces of information. So. It does let us know that this is a 97 model year. It's a 3.4 liter V6. And down here on the engine, it says 3,400. That's cc's or 3.4 liters because there's a thousand cc's per liter. Um, by the way, we're taking the top of this engine off. So there's components on the table there um, to do a repair on this engine. OK, but I think that gets our vehicle identification. One other sticker underneath here. Just shows vacuum hose routing for the 5 VZFE, and that helps a smog technician figure out where hoses go. Here's another sticker under the hood, and this is a refrigerant sticker that tells us what type of refrigerant in the AC system, what type of oil it uses, and how what kind of capacity it uses. And that's it for now. One other thing I wanted to show you, Anna, one um, that I should have done when we were talking about vehicle title. And I'm not sure why this guy is not focusing as, as well as it should. I apologize about that. Hopefully, it'll wake up and focus a little better. Let's see if I can change it. See if that does any better. That's eh, not any better. Anyways, um, so if we go to www.dmv.ca.gov, Department of Vehicles, uh, California GOV, and we click on this, and I'll click on this over here. Um, what we can do is um, what we can do is go to this website, and um, this is you want to use this website because there's just a lot of really good information on vehicle registration, driver's license, etc. Um, this is where you can sign up for an appointment, which in my opinion is the only way to go to DMV. Um, but if you need a form, like if you want to, uh, if we tra uh, if we want to go search and I click forms, and here's our forms. And so, for example, um, this says driver's license, identification cards, vehicle reg forms, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Right now, with the DMV closed, you can fill out forms online, and they actually have a fee calculator. And again, I apologize, this isn't so clear. But they, let me see if I can hold the camera and make it a little bit better. We'll just try. Yeah, that's a little better. So you can see those forms, OK? Um, and um, there's a fee calculator. And so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go ahead and pull the fee calculator up. And I'm going to show you how you can type in your license number and you can actually estimate uh, fees. So let me do that right now. So 
So if I go to the fee calculator, and I'll go ahead and click on it. Sorry, my, my uh, camera has a little bit of a mind of its own. So let me um, go ahead and bring this over here a little bit. So it's this top one here. I know it's, again, a little bit fuzzy. But I'll go ahead and click on it. And here's a form. Uh, one more second. So I'm going to click um, on a fee for a California registered vehicle. And you'll see this here. And so what I've got, sorry, here we go. So I can go ahead and do you know your license plate number? I say yes. I can put my license plate number in here or the last five digits. Um, uh, sorry, put the vehicle identification number in here. And it'll actually tell me what fees are owed. I can... Um, pay those fees, um, and the best way, in my opinion, to pay them is to go to the post office and buy a postal money order for $1, because the DMV will definitely take a postal money order. It's as good as cash. Um, it costs $1, and um, you can mail your forms in. I wonder why that thing changes color so much. But anyways, um, you can mail your forms in, and you can do it with a... Um, like I said, a postal money order, and the other thing you can do is you can mail in um, your title, etc. Make sure you make photocopies before you mail it in. You mail it to their Sacramento address. In about four to six weeks, you'll have a vehicle title back or registration back, etc., etc. So there you go, FYI.